Hi, Dr. Lloyd. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Let's see. The light might be better over here. Yeah. yeah, let me turn up the volume a little bit. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, super. Well, I've got Dr. Lloyd, uh, Amanda Lloyd from uh, Encinitas, California, San Diego area on. We're going to talk about uh, lasers and fillers and, you know, a few other things. We were on last week. But, uh, we just had a terrible connection, so people wanted to hear you again. All right. Maybe better yeah. this time. Yeah, good. You doing well? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Good. Good. Let's, uh, let's jump into, uh, tell us uh, your name, a little bit about you, so people get to know you. We've got a lot of new um, visitors. All right. So, um, I'm Amanda. As Dr. Oz said, um, or Dr. Anwar said, uh, I am a board-certified dermatologist in Encinitas, which is north of San Diego. Um, I do a little bit of everything, so I treat cosmetic patients, you know, helping them to kind of restore the youth of their skin. I treat uh, skin cancer, so I do most, uh, most surgery, and then I also treat venous disease. So I do a little bit of everything. Okay, good. Venus disease as well, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, fantastic. All right. So uh, last time we were on, you really gave us some good information. And actually, I've had uh, a few calls or emails from my friends who want laser. Uh, they're uh, in the Dallas area, so I sent them over there uh, to some of the docs <laughs> there. Yeah. So this thing is uh, good. So go over laser, just the basics, like Wavelengths, what does a wavelength mean? You hear different wavelengths and those wavelengths do different things. So for, for the layperson, what is a wavelength? So the wavelength is basically like one uh, portion of the light spectrum. So, you know, you have this light spectrum, you know, where you see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then you can go outside of it, you know, either into the UV rays or then you go to X-rays or the microwaves from like your microwave. Um, and the length is kind of the length of weight. Hmm. The wave of light is a sinusoidal thing. So it's like wavy. It's like a wave. And the length is the distance between the two peaks. Um, so that's kind of the technical definition. More importantly, in regards to lasers, the wavelength um, is targeting one. Well, it's only one wavelength with a laser, whereas if you're treating light, you're treating with a bunch of wavelengths. So a bunch of different wavelengths. Does that make sense? Uh, so the laser has one wavelength that you dial in. Yes. So it's right. like 1550 that, or right. a 1957 or 532 or 585. It's only one. Whereas if you're treating like an IPL or a light-based device, like broadband light, it's light. So it's, you know, 400 to 700 nanometers, or you put a filter in and it's 515 to 700 nanometers or something like that. So you basically um, have to know the wavelength and then that wavelength then um, reacts differently with different tissues or di different tissues absorb that wavelength. Right. Different. Specifically. Exactly. Right. So there's That's how you damage it. Right. That's how you help it or hurt it. Right. Uh, so there's three different things in the skin that absorb light. There's water, which builds collagen. There's the hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin, which absorbs uh, or is in the red blood cell. And then there's the melanin, which is in the brown kind of spots. Okay. So, so let's start with um, water and, and collagen. Yeah. Um, well, actually, before we do that, so what, what I just heard was you have three different types of tissue that you're targeting with your lasers to cause three different reactions. Right. Three things in the tissue. Right. Three things in the tissue. So when you, when you use a wavelength, which, uh, which is, which attracts water, right? Uh -huh. You build collagen. How does that work? How do you, how do you zap water and make collagen? So, the, right? Doesn't it sound great? You just put some water in the microwave and hopefully collagen comes out. Right. Uh, so we know that when you add the heat, so when you're, um, the water is basically absorbing the energy from the laser, which is creating heat. And when you heat the water in the skin, you activate these things called fibroblasts. Um, which are what generate more collagen. So you're basically 
stimulating your fibroblasts to make more of your own natural collagen. So I have a lot of people that come to me and say, you know, I don't want any fillers. I don't want any Botox. I just want something natural. Um, and there are a few kind of quote unquote more natural fillers like Sculptra that's a, it's a lattice and it stimulates your body to make its own in a similar way. Um, if stimulating those fibroblasts, but a laser, you're not injecting anything. You're just putting light, you know, one wavelength of light into the skin. And that is heating the skin, which is stimulating those fibroblasts to make more collagen. Okay. Very good explanation. Thank you. Um, and what, uh, what can you do, uh, with these lasers regarding red, red skin? Red. So red usually comes in two or three varieties if you include blue. So red is either like a diffuse redness, like in a rosacea patient. Um, then we also get little like squiggly lines on our faces or telangiectasias, which are from the sun and our genetics. Um, and then we have these kind of blue or reticular veins. Like you see people get them on their noses here, or you'll see like the old ladies or old men that get the like blue veins that are going up their forehead. Um, those are something that you can also treat. So anything, basically anything that has blood in it, um, you can get rid of. So the little streaks of, um, vessels, very tiny vessels. Mm -hmm. and can you also treat the rosacea, the, the, the diffuse red? Yep. Right. So is that, so that's the, uh, so that wavelength is, last week you told me it was like 532. Yeah, 532. So each, so the chromophore is that thing that we're targeting, either the water, the oxyhemoglobin, or the melanin. And each one of those have a different absorption spectrum. So they, uh, you know, absorb really well at some wavelengths and absorb terribly at other wavelengths. Like they don't absorb, I don't know, 300 nanometers at all, but they'll absorb 500 nanometers. So you have to be in the right wavelength in order for the target to absorb the energy to have the desired effect great great okay and and then the third are uh, brown spots where you target melanin so tell us a little about that um so melanin um is what kind of gets to pop melanin is made by your melanocytes which are the cells in your skin that make your pigment pigment and they can get kind of excited by the sun and overproduce which is going to make those brown spots that nobody likes. Um, and that brown in the, those are called solar lentigines. Um, and the brown is kind of deposited at the bottom layer of the top layer of the skin. Um, and the light goes there. So when you're using, or the wavelength goes there. So when you're using a laser targeting one specific thing, you need to make sure you're targeting the right thing and that you get it to the right depth. Because if you, if you're targeting brown and you use something or you have your pulse duration too long so it goes you know your targets here and you turn the laser on and you go all the way to here you you missed it right right so you have to make sure you are going to the right depth and targeting the right thing right and how how do you know that you're targeting the right depth so the depth is determined by the pulse duration so how long the the pulse is fired okay all right very, very good. Is that done? I imagine that's done automatically. You're dialing that in. Pick, well, the, the user of the laser picks it. The, the user picks it on the laser. Yeah. Dials it in. Okay. Right. And how often do you calibrate those? Um, well, they do like annual service maintenance, but every, every skin is everybody's skin and every lesion is different. And so Sometimes a pulse duration of 10, 10 nanoseconds is better. Sometimes there's 12 nanoseconds. So it kind of depends on where it is, you know, because not everybody's vessels are in the exact same place. Just like when you're doing Botox, yeah, the label comes with a template that you're supposed to follow. But I don't know anybody that's actually good at injecting that follows that template because nobody's anatomy is exactly the same. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So of these three different problems, which ones have the best results? I mean, they all do. It just depends on what your problem is. So like for me, I get, I'm light eyes and light hair. But I get red, like I hate the red. I mean, I get wrinkles too, but the redness is something that really happens frequently in my skin. So I use the red laser 
or a laser that treats redness more frequently than I do something brown. You know, I think that's like, I don't know, five or six brown spots, whereas there's other people that have maybe a little bit more pigment in their skin at baseline, have more brown, but don't have very much red. So they would want one that's going to target more brown. And then there's people that have both, and you can do kind of a combination of the two. Um, and then everybody, you know, likes collagen. So, you know, that's good for anyone. It just kind of depends when you look in the mirror, what bothers you? Right. Well, no, I, I know what bothers me, but we, we want people to know what has really good results. I think last time we spoke, uh, you said that the, the brown spots um, were the ones that had the highest success rate. Yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all successful in treating their one thing, as long as you are targeting the right thing and put it to the right depth. Okay. All right. And there's a positive comment about clean. Thank you, uh, Lori, L Lori and author. Um, okay, lovely. So when you're treating people, do you, do you, do you identify one area of problem? Like, hey, today I'm going to work on the brown spots and another day we'll work on collagen or do you, can you? Yeah. So some lasers, so like the Fraxel Dual, it's called the Dual, quote unquote, because it has two wavelengths. So brown the 1927 for brown and then it also has a 1550 for water and so you can do in one treatment session you can use both of those wavelengths to kind of help the brown and build some collagen so that's something that i do i use that one very often um, and there's different varieties you know halo is another one that does collagen and i think brown um, you know there's a bunch of different lasers out there and as the um patient or the consumer looking for a laser procedure, you really don't need to figure out what laser is best for you. You need to find what position is best for you and what position knows what they're doing and, you know, uses lasers frequently enough to know how to use a laser. Because everybody, everybody uses the laser a little bit differently because you're, the physician is the one that's programming the laser. It's not like it, you turn it on and that there's one setting for everybody. Everybody's a little bit different. And so, having the physician know how to use the laser really well is really important. So it's so not- how, how, do you, how does the patient know the patient, the, the physician knows what they're doing? They're really well, well experienced. So there's a society called the American Society for Laser Surgery and Medicine. So they um, do a lot of publications. And so if the, if the physician's a member of that group, you can, think that they're or be you know led to believe that they know something or at least a little bit about lasers you have to apply to be a member um, and they accept you based on certain criteria um, as the person should preferably be you know a board certified dermatologist there's some you know plastic surgeons and other people out there um, using lasers although I don't since I'm not them I don't know how much training exactly they have but you want to make sure the person has done more than like a weekend course um, in lasers and so even just calling the office of someone you want to go to and asking what experience the person or that position has with lasers you know making sure they're board certified is really important because there's people kind of masquerading as various things out there and you want to make sure you go somewhere where your skin is safe because um, if it's programmed incorrectly, then you have a burn or a scar or hyperpigmentation or something not so fantastic. Right. So it's, it's totally legit for a patient to ask, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I run into situations where patients don't want to ask uh, the experience of a cardiologist, you know, and you know, we, we do know that, you know, the more cases you do and the more continuing education that you do, the, the right. better results are going to be. Totally. Uh, so very good. So, so repeat the name of that society one more time slowly. Um, it's the American Society for Laser Surgery and Medicine. So A-S-L-M-S, -S, or ASLMS is what most people call it because it's so long. ASLM, okay. American Society of Laser Surgery and Medicine? Mm-hmm. Okay. And they have all of the people that are certified on that list and they, you can. You yeah. Know. It's another society like the American board of dermatology or not the board, but the American Academy of dermatology that you can be a member of 
but if you're a member of it, you're probably interested in lasers or have some experience in lasers. They put on an annual meeting that's all about lasers, you know, and the new lasers and what's up and coming and um, how to, you know, treat new things with old lasers. Um, and so they really keep you kind of informed on um, what's happening in lasers and they have their own publication, um, Laser Surgery and Medicine, which is a journal that has, you know, lots and lots of articles on the different lasers. So is there a, a board certification for lasers in, in Durham? No. 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 Okay. And during during training, how, how much laser experience do residents get? So it depends on the training program. Um, the amount of lasers and cosmetics in any one program is highly variable. There's programs out there that have almost none. Um, and there's programs out there that have a fairly good amount. Um, in Dallas, we had a pretty good amount. Um, of lasers and kind of a variety of things. Um, but I know there's other areas where it's just not um, something that that program does. And so it's kind of dependent on your location and that program and their director and how they set up their program. Okay, great. Um, there are so fellowships. Um, okay. There are fellowships that you can do after residency um, that have lasers. The um, there's two different kinds. There's the um, procedural dermatology or cutaneous oncology and micrographic surgery, I think is what it's called now. It's changed names a few times, but basically there's the most fellowship that you can do, um, which a lot of times the most fellowship has a significant laser portion mixed in. So that's what I did. I did a Mohs fellowship, which was like half surgery, half laser surgery. So we got, I got a lot of um, laser experience, but then the American Society of Dermato Dermatologic Surgery came up with their own kind of quote unquote cosmetic um, fellowship, which is called the cosmetic, uh, it's changed names too, but it's a cosmetic fellowship where you're not focused as much on Mohs, but you do mostly, you know, cosmetics and lasers. Um, and there's a bunch of programs out there too. So if you feel like, if the dermatologist feels like they didn't get enough in um, residency, there's an opportunity for one extra year of training. And so when you're a patient looking to go see a doctor, you probably want to pick someone that's been fellowship trained in either Mohs or cosmetic, um, the a ASDS cosmetic fellowship, because at least, you know, they've had an extra year of kind of information about um, lasers and cosmetics specifically. Right. Good. So, um, let's talk about the complications of lasers. What are like some major potential complications that people need to be aware of? So scarring is the main one. Scarring is um, bad, and generally speaking, depending on the type of scar you get. Um, you know, there's in the beginning of lasers there, people were doing the um, ablative lasers and they were going down onto the neck. We kind of talked about this last week, but the neck skin and the face skin are not the same. Um, and there was a lot of significant scarring on the neck. Um, you can also get hypopigmentation. So if you're a little bit too wild with targeting those brown spots, you can get rid of all of the mel melanin um, and um, end up with, you know, depigmentation or hypopigmentation, which is like a lightening color of your skin. Um, you can end up with hyperpigmentation or increased brown. Um, just kind of depending on what happened. Right. So, so scarring, especially in the neck, uh, but other areas. Yeah. I mean, you can get scarring on the face too. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you stack a bunch of pulses on top of each other, you can probably get necrosis of the skin. Um, when they're, when you're treating those vessels along the nose, if they, if the pulses are stacked or you use too much energy, you can get little pits, which is essentially a scar, but it's like a dent in the nose um, from too much energy, basically shrinking the skin. Got it. Okay. Um, so what, what about the neck? You, you, you mentioned, uh, do you use lasers on the neck? Yeah. All the time. For collagen or? Same, same three things. Same. So, uh, collagen, brown, and red. Okay. So, a very common problem that people have is something called poikiloderma, which is from the sun, and it's basically like that mishmash of colors. It's like a little bit of red, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of white. And right. 
lasers are great for poikiloderma because that kind of, you know, you, you might have to use more than one. And I tell my patients, you know, pick what bothers you the most. And so I'll look at a neck or I'll look at a chest or a face and I'll say, okay, look, you have more brown than red. So we're going to start out with brown and collagen. And then if you now afterwards only see the red, because that very often happens, we get rid of some of the noise that was quote unquote more annoying. And then you see the little things that you didn't notice before, because now you're looking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then we'll use the laser for the red. Right. Uh, Occasionally people think their red looks better after we treat brown and collagen, and that's probably just because you have a little bit more collagen holding those blood vessels. Um, but you kind of need to use, you usually need more than one, but it depends on your skin. You know, if you're like super sun damaged, then you're probably going to need multiple. But if you're just doing something for skin maintenance, you know, it just kind of is up to you and what bothers you. So can you use um, the laser as prophylactic before you start getting a bunch of wrinkles? And Definitely, definitely. I mean, you're always getting older, which is good, but your skin is always, you know, every day you're damaging your collagen and, you know, as much as you wear your sunscreen and take care of your skin, you're still having breakdown of your skin. And so there are lasers that have almost no downtime, like the um, Clarin Brilliant or the Laser Genesis. Um, and they are great maintenance lasers, you know, instead of getting a facial or having an ext extraction or whatever, you know, chemical peel you're going to have, you might as well save your money and have, you know, a laser every quarter, a low, you know, like clear and brilliant every quarter that's going to add the energy, heat the skin, stimulate those fibroblasts and build your collagen just to kind of maintain your skin's health. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, and at what age should people start getting uh, maintenance? I mean, it's up to it's like when should people start having Botox, you know, or neuromodulator or filler. It kind of depends on the person and how, you know, they take care of their skin. Some people are going to age better than others. And so it's kind of up to the person. Well, the toxins are being pushed for the, you know, 20 year olds now. I mean, I, my, I had all three in my 20s. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So oh, maybe 23 or 24. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, I mean, it's preventative. And if you're a smart, you know, 20 something year old, you're going to do what you can to prevent looking like, a, you know, a leather purse. Right. Right. Yeah. That's what I notice a lot in uh, San Diego. Beautiful bodies, leather fur skin. Yeah. 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 It's just uh, incredible amounts. Um, anyway, so let's get to the uh, other uh, light modalities, IPL, and so so, so go over the non non laser uh, general areas. I think you went through some of that, you know, l last time. Um, well, the other light, the other thing that uh, the other light device would be an IPL or broadband light. Um, I guess there's phototherapy. Um, also, but phototherapy is more for like vitiligo or psoriasis or um, something along those lines of more of the inflammatory autoimmune type things, um, which phototherapy uses UVA or UVB, which generally, you know, the average public doesn't want to just go get, you know, UVA or UVB. Um, like a tanning bed, you certainly don't want to go into because that's a mega dose of UVA and that's going to damage your collagen. It's going to turn your collagen into mush. You know, it's going to give you brown spots. It's going to give you red spots. It's going to give you melanoma. <laughs> it's going to give you all kinds of bad things. So you certainly don't want to go pop in a tanning bed. Um, but then there's other things too that aren't light, to light related, but they are used for quote unquote improving the skin like um, radio frequency or microneedling or thermage which is um, ultrasound. Um, so it kind of depends on which route you're kind of want to go. Right. So, so you have uh, nearly a dozen, you know, options. So you better get in the hands of somebody who knows how to use the, right. uh, provide the, there's your, yes. right, the right therapy. So somebody asked, uh, can you get scarring from thermage? I mean, you can get scarring from everything, anything. Um, so you want to make sure you know who's treating you. Right, right, right. Well, great. Um, 
so I'm so glad we got back together because our connection last week was bad. And now uh, we have all this awesome uh, information. Mm -hmm. and, um, do you have anything else that you want to add as far as, you know, aesthetics and, uh, you know, make some general comments? I know we wanted to talk maybe a little bit about fillers. Um, you know, no. maybe give us a couple minutes on that and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Sounds good. Yeah. What about, you want to say a few things about fillers? Or sure. What, what your favorite fillers are? My favorite fillers. Mm. Well, fillers, I can't pick one, to be honest, because it depends. So, like, one of my favorite places to fill in the face yeah. is the tear troughs. So, like, this area under the eyes. Um, because that's an area where people, it really weighs down on people's self-esteem and makes people feel old and tired, even though they don't look or, you know, they do look it, but they don't feel like they are older, tired, or they feel like they look older or more tired than they should. Um, I had a patient recently who lost her son and she was crying a lot. And she also had a lot of volume loss under her eyes and we treated under her eyes and she looked a million times better. And she's like, I just look in the mirror now and I don't see this, you know, lady that's old and been crying all day. And so right. it is very rewarding to make people or help people to feel better about themselves by improving a relatively small area on the skin. Right, right. Everybody's face loses volume a little bit differently. So that's why there's a bunch of different fillers. There's probably, I don't know how many, there's like 30 plus fillers on the market. Um, and the kind of like how the person using the laser has to know what they're targeting and where in the skin it is. The person using the filler needs to know um, the properties of the filler they're using and where they're putting it. So you need to have the amount of volume that the um, filler provides and the location where it's being placed match. So like um, there's some fillers like Bellatero or Restylane Silk um, or Juvederm Ultra, which are very thin. Um, and so they're good. Um, or even Restylane, so they're good for under the eyes or an area, you know, you don't have a lot of skin in this area, but you can have significant hollowing that makes you look tired. Right. So you want to use something fairly thin there to help increase the amount of volume, but not have it look like you have caterpillars under your eyes. Um, whereas there's other fillers that are more um, structural and more voluminous, like Voluma or Lift or um, Define, um, which are these other kind of more substantial fillers that are better for kind of rebuilding deeper underlying structure like the cheeks or the jawline. Um, so areas where, or the temples, areas where you need more volume, where like if you put something thin and fluid in a cheek, you're not going to notice any difference. Right. right. The very soft, malleable, thin filler that's going to add some volume, but not, not a ton. Whereas if you put something like Voluma there, you'll get, you know, something that stands up on itself, which you wouldn't want, you know, a huge blob of something stuck under your eye, but on your cheek, you want it to lift to help kind of improve the nasolabial fold and the wrinkling in the cheeks. Right. Very good. Well, uh, super good review. So the bottom line, I, I hear you saying a few, uh, several times that, you want to really identify your own problem, what's bothering you, go talk mm -hmm. to your board certified dermatologist and um, make a make a plan, know the complications. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Right. Training. Yeah, That's so a lot of great advice. I want to thank you. Thank you for coming on. Mm-hmm. Been... Yeah. Okay. All right, Dr. Lloyd, thank you for, uh, for coming on, being a guest on our show. And uh, I'll go ahead and end our session now and no technical problems all right thanks us you have a great Thanks. day you too bye-bye